Today, we'll talk about uncompetitive inhibition. It's an important type of reversible inhibition. And let's look at it. In normal circumstances, what happens is enzyme interacts with the substrate and form a transient enzyme substrate complex, which ultimately give rise to the product and the enzyme is unaltered. But under the situation of uncompetitive inhibition, the enzyme and substrate react with each other and thus forming the enzyme substrate complex. But eventually, the inhibitor or the uncompetitive inhibitor binds to the enzyme substrate complex. Instead of binding to the enzyme alone, it binds to the enzyme substrate complex. As a result, the enzymatic reaction does not proceed further and the reaction stops. So it does not give rise to the product formation. Now, let's look at the whole situation what we talked about in a pictorial format in an uh, equa equation format, right? So here is our basic equation where one side we should get product by the conversion of enzyme substrate complex but as in this particular situation the uncompetitive inhibitor is binding so we are getting a enzyme substrate inhibitor complex instead of getting a product and the reaction is not proceeding further and we have defined all the rate constant for all these reactions and for these uh, inhibitor binding let be the let the rate constant be ki now let's look at the michaelis mentin equation under this situation and try to understand what has changed with the presence of this inhibitor so this is how a normal michaelis mentin equation look like in a v versus s plot and this is how the equation look like in presence of an uncompetitive inhibitor by just looking at this red line which is the equation in present of in presence of a uncompetitive inhibitor you can say that the v max has decreased right and the new v max is way lesser than the previous v max also if you look at the km the km has also decreased right now the equation which is normal the michael mentris equation looks somewhat like this which is v0 equal to v max into substrate divided by km plus substrate concentration right but in presence of an uncompetitive inhibitor you additionally bring in a term which is alpha dash now what is this alpha dash and where it is coming from so in order to understand that let's try to derive the equation okay here is our reaction format again now from this reaction format, if we consider the inhibitor binding kinetics with the enzyme substrate complex, we can define our Ki dash equal to Es into inhibitor concentration divided by the concentration of enzyme substrate and inhibitor complex. Now, this is an important part which we would be used to derive our equation. Now, at any given time, we know that the total enzyme concentration is a combination of enzyme, free enzyme, plus enzyme in format of an enzyme substrate complex, or the enzyme in format of an enzyme substrate inhibitor complex. So, three kind of possibilities are there when we talk about the total enzyme, right? Now, taking ES common from this thing, we get to a uh, equation like this. Now, multiplying both sides with K2 gives us something interesting. Previously, from Michaelis Menten equation derivation, we know that V0 equal to K2 into ES and Vmax is equal to K2 ET. And let us define this 1 plus inhibitor concentration by Ki as a parameter alpha dash now if we plug in all these values and assumptions what we get is something like this which would ultimately lead us to this equation now we understand what is alpha now alpha is basically 
a constant here right now here you might be wondering that how the red con how the km of the reaction is decreased so we know that here the product formation is not happening most of the es is getting converted to enzyme substrate and inhibitor complex as a result the concentration of es is decreasing but according to la chatelier principle what happens is the equilibrium for this reaction is shifted rightwards and more and more es is formed and if we look at this phenomena kinetically what is what appears to us is the affinity of these enzyme towards the substrate has increased in presence of this inhibitor now the increase in enzyme substrate generally indicate the enzyme has a higher degree of affinity towards this substrate now let's look at the kinetic data in a better fashion in a line weaver work plot in a linear format so without any inhibitor present the graph somewhat looks like this and this is the equation where we have plot this uh, thing in in an axis of 1 by v by 1 by s and the slope here is km by v max and the intercept is 1 by v max right now <coughs> what we can plot is the equation in presence of an inhibitor in an uncompetitive inhibitor and the equation somewhat looks like this now what has changed is the intercepts not the slope the slope is the same the intercept has changed so that's a characteristic of the uncompetitive inhibition the slope didn't change for line we were work plot whereas the intercept has changed and depending upon the values of alpha the equations would shift left to leftwards and greater the alpha the the plot would shift leftwards now here what is interesting to know is that all these plots are parallel to each other and this is a characteristic of uncompetitive uncom inhibitions now in case of uncompetitive inhibition the enzyme substrate binds to a region the enzyme in, in case of uncompetitive inhibition the inhibitor binds to a region other than the active site which is very different from a competitive inhibition in case of competitive inhibition the inhibitor binds to the active site actually the inhibitor and substrate competes for the active site so that is completely different in case of uncompetitive inhibition where inhibitor binds to a site other than the active site and leads to a conformational change in the enzyme such that the enzyme and substrate complex cannot get converted to a product situation now let's look at this equation or le let's look at how the substrate con changing substrate concentration this inhibition is changing so first consider the equation of uncompetitive inhibition in this situation let us have a hell lot of substrate now in case of competitive inhibition by increasing the substrate con uh, concentration we can reverse the uh, we can reverse the inhibition right let's see what happens here now if we have too much substrate, con substrate concentration then km becomes negligible and as a result the equation becomes somewhat like this then our v0 or our enzyme reaction have a velocity which is v max by alpha dash and now we can understand why our v max or, or the enzymatic velocity is different or decreased in this uncompetitive inhibition reaction now let's assume that substrate concentration is way way lesser than the km in that situation the substrate concentration is negligible so v0 becomes v max s by km so in case of this kind of uncompetitive inhibition having lower substrate concentration is beneficial and it can reverse the effect of this inhibition now let us take an example of this kind of enzymatic uh, inhibition reaction so placental derived 
alkaline phosphatase is uncompetitively inhibited by phenylalanine. So this is an example of uncompetitive inhibition. So that was pretty much it about the uncompetitive inhibition. So we discussed the kinetics of it, how the Michaelis Menten equation looks like under this situation, and also we try to understand the kinetic data using line weaver bar plot. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you like this video, give it a quick thumbs up. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Thank you.